name's Jay Sims, and uh, this is Pat Brooks, and uh, I started, I actually took guitar lessons when I was six, and then I changed, we moved away from the town, and I was separated from my first guitar teacher, and I got interested in playing baseball, and things like that, but I always listened to music. There was always music in our house, and mom was listening to rock and roll, dad was listening to country, and <clears throat> so uh, I liked all styles of stuff. And um, then when I was 15, I was going through my parents' old storage building, and I found that first guitar that they bought me when I was six, and it cost $26 out of the Sears catalog in 1966. And so I got it out and put some new strings on it, and got me a couple of books uh, with songs in it that I already knew, like uh, America and John Denver and Willie Nelson. And so I just started learning these songs, and it just kind of came to me. And so I started that when I was 15, and when I was 16, I played my first professional gig, or first paying gig anyway. And it was at a Holiday Inn in Victoria, Texas. and. Um, made 50 bucks for that and little did I know that would be the highest paying gig I'd have for about the next four years <laughs> and uh, so you know I knew right then that's what I wanted to do and so I just kind of took off from there. Swinging beer in the local joint She came walking in Thought this might just be the last place on earth She hasn't been Lines on her face Not so much from time It's from the miles Must have been a while since daylight Had seen one of her smiles to a rusty sign on the wall let me know her brand pull it from the cooler slowly put it in her hand she lifted it three times didn't say two words and ordered one more couldn't seem to help herself from looking to the door she's as bright as a pawn shop diamond Soft as a coal miner's hands Sweet as the breeze that blows over L.A. Daddy's angel gone astray Pretty similar. I got my first guitar along with uh, Mel Bay's Modern Guitar Method, a book that was so modern that it hadn't been updated since 1975. Um, so I was nine years old, so that would have made it 95 for me. So here I am learning out of a 25 year, 20 year old book. You know, dude's got a leisure suit with polka <laughs> dots on it, and you know, learning the Merry Men and all these sorts of ridiculous sight reading songs and. Just kind of like Jay, you know, I just, I got interested in other things, baseball, football, you know, everything else, it was being outside, and uh, see, Dad was always musical, and he played country and stuff like that, and, and Mom, just like your mom, was a rock and roll fan, so I heard Merle Haggard, and then I heard Traffic, and then I heard Waylon Jennings, and then I heard the band, so it was kind of like this weird shuffle before there was such a thing on our Kenwood speakers that cost more than, like, six months' rent our house where we lived. Um, so same same age, about 15, uh, 14, I was in ninth grade, and a friend of mine said, hey, let's do the talent show. I never played 
guitar. You know, I didn't. I mean, I love music, but he said, "Well, you play bass, and I'll play guitar. We'll do Can't Explain by the Who." And I was like, "Oh, that'll be awesome!" So I downloaded Can't Explain off Napster, which remains to this day the only song I've ever illegally downloaded. <laughs> um, and I think Pete would be okay with it. Um, so learned the bass part, and then I learned quickly after that that I couldn't sing and play at the same time. <laughs> So uh, it's hard to do on bass. I mean, yeah, it's just like you know, trying to halfway play a John Entwistle bass part, and uh, so that was it was I was hooked after that. I mean, the whole school was just I was a rock star at, at our small school from ever after, and uh, I went back home and pulled my Aria Pro 2 Stratocaster knockoff out from under my bed, and put new strings on it, and busted out that Mel Bay book again, learned all the chords, and started playing Leonard Skinnerd and Metallica and whatever I knew would annoy my dad the most. <laughs> and uh, it's been ever since, you know, dad always played music, so we, we have that together. We've played music together for 15 years now and just, it's kept me out of more trouble than it's gotten me into, so. There's something about the whistle of a train She's got a network that's unbelievable. And she built it up to kind of what it is now. You know, and then you, she went on back to school and did her thing. And uh, I've had some really good hosts after that, Scott Andrews and then Just Stiff. And they've all done a great job of keeping it rolling. Where do you want to see it a year from now? You know, I, I want to see it just like it is. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I, I like it the way it is. I ain't gonna let you. Out of my sight, no, I ain't gonna let you out of my sight. Let me tell you, sweet darling, got you right in my sights. 